Hi everybody, I'm Juwanda with you when it's size when it's this message, sorry guys, I heard something. This message is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising, or Venus and Sagittarius. This is your extended mini love energy for the month of April 2020. Sag, I really believe that Fire Signs is going to have an amazing year. But not only that, I've been sensing like this only urgency to do like some extended love energy for everyone. And I feel like Spirit really has something to share with each and every last one of us. So I really hope that this reading resonates with you, if not all of you. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I'm super excited to see what the universe has for you this season, my love. Thank you for watching. Let's proceed. So, Sag, this is your extended mini love energy. So let's see what Spirit has for you, my love. This is exciting because I know it's going to be something interesting. All right, here we go. Because I kind of already pre shuffled, so it is not going to take all day. All right. Oh. Wow. I'm trying to think about whose energy this is. If I'm not mistaken, this is Cancer's energy. They got this card previously. and I mean, in their love extended mini reading, they got twin flames as well. So this is interesting. Hmm. If it wasn't cancer, then it was, um, it had to be one of the air signs, like either Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. But somebody definitely got this whole twin flame energy. This is interesting, okay? So, when we think about twin flames, okay, um... We know that there is like this undeniable connection, okay? Something that we just can't seem to separate no matter what we do, no matter what happens, okay? This person can possibly be your twin flame, Sag. And that's probably why at times you may notice you're just sitting down and they may say something that got on your nerve just in that moment. But you love them so much, you can't even get mad because they are so much like you. Like, it's such a scary feeling, but it's a good feeling because it's not always that we get to connect with ourselves. So being with a twin flame is somehow um, powerful. And it can really bring up a lot of emotions inside of us, you know? It's a very deep, compelling feeling, okay? But... You guys actually compliment each other. So whoever this person is, you know, you guys um, actually do compliment one another. You know, sometimes twin flames separate for the greater good and they get back later on. Sometimes they, they know each other deep within spirit and then they find each other later on. You know, and when you guys reunite with each other, it's like this, this energy that can't be broken. You know, no matter who says what, no matter who come in between, no matter who tries to separate you guys, you just can't be broken. You can't be separated, you know. And even if you are separated, it's only for a lesson or a period of time in life that you guys needed to be separated for. So it's not something that's going to last forever. So if you feel like at some point that first week of April, if you feel like, oh my God, like this is really irritating, I don't know what to do. You know, if you have that, that feeling like I just want to give up, trust me, it's a good chance that your twin flame feel the same way, okay? Or they may have some deep thoughts or things that's going on in their mind that they possibly may not be sharing with you. But what I admire about that twin flame energy is that, you know, no matter how much you try to hide it, they know you. Right? So that's the beauty of it all. You don't have to always put up this facade or try to pretend something that you're not. And the first week of April, we get to deal with a lot of that because Venus is going to be in Gemini, um, which is your opposite sign, by the way. Right? Gemini is going to be, um, I mean, Venus is going to be in Gemini um, the first week of April. And then we're going to have the full moon in Libra. And that can kind of stir up some minor disagreements or minor conflicts between either you and your spouse or 
situations that happen with your spouse. Maybe you're becoming overprotective over them or maybe they're becoming overprotective over you. But there can be minor confrontations the first week of April, okay? Going into the second week or the third week of April would be a lot better because it's a lot more focused on your finances than being unhappy. So you and your spouse will have a lot more to talk about, okay? Let's move forward. Wow, I see the X. So again, what are some of the things that I just said, right? Like twin, sometimes twin flames separate only just to get right back together for the greater good, for a reason. You guys were reunited for a reason. And until you guys learn to stop fighting each other over things that don't matter and learn to come together to build the greater good, to do what you were born to do with this person, you will continuously have issues with this person because you guys are like, oh, but you said, and no, oh, you said, and you know, some uh, people, you know, they have this image that twin flame relationships are supposed to be perfect, and they're not perfect. You get what I'm saying? There will always be confrontation when you're in a twin flame relationship, especially if you guys don't get to see each other as much, or if you, this is your first time meeting your twin flame, they have to like, you know, feel your energy out all over again. You know, it's, it's like a really surprising energy. And it's like, well, I love you. I can't seem to shake you, you know, but I can't let you go either. You know, it's, it's like there's this push and pull energy. It's very deep and profound. And when you have that type of energy, it's sometimes hard to let go. But sometimes it may be needed to just simply take your hands off of everything and let it go. You know, so with the axe being here, it's time to cut things loose, you know. And when I see the axe visually is is showing me you know letting go of control letting go letting it be known that you don't always have to control a circumstance or an output or a particular situation or something that you and this person go through you don't have to have control over everything okay let your spouse be themselves okay so stop the pattern, you know, silent treatment. Some of you in this, you know, in twin flame relationships, you had the runner or you had the chaser. Some of you are really giving each, giving one or, or another the silent treatment, not really saying anything, causing this person to kind of, causing either you or this person to do the uttermost, okay, going overboard to prove themselves. Again, that to me, that's like a sign of trying to force something or to control something. And you don't have to control anything because this person do love you and they see you for who you are and they do want the best for you. So you don't have to feel like you have to control anything okay and they don't either have to feel like they have to control so if this is not you for some of you that may be single this could be many of the reasons why you and your twin flame had to separate to begin with okay because there was a lot of control issues a lot of criticism a lot of judgment you know and spirit don't want you beating each other down spirit wants you to reunite to be happy to bring love and light in the world to work together to bring the better good right so but if you're continuously fighting with each other how can you do that okay you need to work together as a team and not as enemies okay Excuse me, God, I'm, I'm a little congested. It is definitely spring here in the States. The flowers are blooming everywhere and pollen is all over the place. So I'm definitely congested, okay? So I do apologize if I sound extra stuffy. So you guys are definitely working through some type of heartbreak. Again, I feel like for those of you, you have recently probably separated from a twin flame or maybe you and your twin flame haven't really been on the same page lately, mentally or physically. Maybe you're desiring more quality time. Maybe they're desiring more sex. Maybe they're desiring, you know, to have more adventure. And maybe you're like, I don't have time for that. Again, in a twin flame, twin flame relationship, there is always the chaser and the runner. So while some days you may be like, oh, I got to go. I got things to do. I don't have time to focus on that right now, right? <laughs> the chaser is like, well, I'm trying to get you to spend time with me. I'm trying to make love. You know, I'm trying to build what we lost, you know, really trying their best to kind of reach out to you, right? But what I admire about the twin flame relationship is that it always tends to go back and forth, right? Like it's like a ping pong energy between twin flames because they, they are so much alike, they don't realize that they do it to each other, you know? So, and guys... <clears throat> 
Scorpio also got this similar energy as well. Okay? So, I don't know if you guys are, or maybe you have Scorpio energy in your birth chart somewhere, either as a sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Or maybe Sagittarius is your sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Right? But this energy is very similar. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Except for the fact that Scorpio is determined not to separate. Okay? But so if you have Sagittarius in your birth chart, then this is a lot of conflict and energy. And you may want to really kind of take a step back and say, no, I don't want to separate. Like I said, because if you guys do, or maybe if you are dating a Scorpio, then you may want to review their many extended reading as well. Because... And talked a lot about that. That Scorpio is not trying to separate. They're not trying to give up. They're determined to prove themselves. They're determined to make things right. And your energy is saying, listen, we got to have balance. We got to find that union. You know, we got to find that thing that makes us great. We got to do the impossible. You know, the things that people spoke against us. We got to show and prove. We got to show people that we are great together, you know. And that's exactly why the healing heart is here. Because you know what? Yeah, I've been through enough stuff, and I've been through enough toxic relationships, but you're my twin flame. There's no way that you can do to me what you won't do to yourself. When you hurt me, you only hurting yourself, right? That is what's going on here, Sag. When you hurt your spouse, you're only hurting yourself, and vice versa. When they try to hurt you, they're hurting themselves. When they, when they lie to you, they're lying to themselves. When they're making you cry, they're going to make themselves cry. Because, again, you guys are one. You know, and it reminds me, you know, I'm not the biggest religious person in the world, but I do know a thing or two about the Bible. And what I do know is that, you know, in the Bible, it talks about how, you know, when, when he married his wife, he became one. You know, there was union. There was a unity there. There was a connection. There was chemistry. There was a partnership. They became one. It wasn't just, oh, I'm a man and you're a woman and, yeah, we're just going to shack up and do whatever. No, it had nothing to do with that. It had nothing to do with the masculine and the feminine energy. It had everything to do with, no, I'm taking you by the hand and we are going to become one. We are not going to judge each other. You know, we instead, we're going to build one another. We're going to help each other. We're going to inspire each other. We're going to run the world together. We're going to uplift each other. You know, we're going to love one another unconditionally, you know, then that is what twin flame energy is. It's all about that oneness. Okay. So when you look at your spouse and your spouse is getting on your nerve, just really, really take the time to think, you know what? It's not always about me. <laughs> we are a union. It's not about me today. It's not always about me. How do you feel, honey? You know, it feels so good when we can just take our emotions out of it and say, you know what, it's not always about me. How are you doing, honey? You know, it feels so good to do that sometimes. Okay, let's look at the last card. Okay, so not today. Wow, this is interesting, guys. I don't know if you guys are dealing with... Wow, I don't... Matter of fact, this is not even Scorpio's energy. No. Who got this? This was Pisces energy, guys. So it's definitely a lot of water resemblance here, guys. So there's definitely either a, a water sign you're dealing with, or maybe you have water signs in your birth chart, or, okay, um, spirit wants us to understand our emotions during this time because water signs represent our emotions, the depth of us, you know, the deep feeling, the inside, you know, the wounds, the things that we have a hard time healing. Wow. So a lot of you are trying, you're refusing to have this conversation. Like I said, in twin flame relationships, there is the runner and there is the chaser. A lot of us are dealing with that energy this season in the month of April where we're like, I got you, honey. Oh, no, I don't want to be bothered. You know, <laughs> a lot of us are doing that. Not right now. You know, I'm busy. Even when it comes to sex, we're like, nope, not right now. I'm, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I don't want to. And the chase is like, shit, you better. You know, like, it's, it's a lot of ping pong energy happening in love. But it doesn't phase. I mean, it doesn't uh, throw me too off track because it makes sense. The Libra full moon is happening, April 7th or 8th, give or take a day. So, of course we're indecisive, of course we're too busy, of course we don't know what to do when it comes to love. We're all over the place. <laughs> okay, guys, it was by the second week of April, by the 10th through the 14th, guys, I just heard the 10th through the 14th. 
<laughs> it's gonna be amazing time for you, Sag. So don't get too hung up on, you know, what happened or what you should have said or what you could have said and made things work better or you know, don't worry about that. Just be who you know you can be. You know, be yourself. That is all that you can do, Sag, all right? Let's see what Spirit wants to share with your soul today or what your soul is yearning for. Is there anything that your soul needs to know? Is there anything that was left out that needs to be said? Let's get some answers, okay, guys? Ooh, child. <laughs> I ain't got time for this. Pride, okay, guys? A lot of other cards that fell out was freedom, forgiveness, okay? Wow, the other card that fell out was grief. Ooh. What else? Patience, failure, gratitude. I'm going to read all these guys. So, abundance. Wow. Okay, so that way, when I reshuffle, you guys will see just how crazy spirit works, okay? Woo, give me clarity for all those cards that just came out. Wow. Wow. This is somebody that you really have deep feelings for, Sag. This is interesting. All right, let's see. Wow. You guys just saw me shuffle. Okay. Abundance. It came out. Abundance. Abundance of love. Okay. I am a limitless being. And I can manifest whatever I desire into this physical reality. So, if I really do want my twin flame, I know exactly how to do it. And when. And how. And where. They may be the runner, but I'm the chaser. And if I know Sagittarius like I think I do, I can only imagine that, yeah, you guys are most definitely the chaser. And I think that you guys are okay being the chaser. But I do believe that for our Sagittarius women, they will actually rather be pursued. So I think that you guys, <laughs> the women anyway, uh, prefer to be the runner while their significant other are the chaser. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just know that you guys have to learn to heal from within. You know, anything that doesn't sit right, anything that you feel like you need to break loose of or anything that you need to let go of, let it go. Some of you never even met your twin flame. But you don't even know that you're going to meet your twin flame during this season. Because the season of Aries, the new moon, okay, we have the new moon in Aries that happened in March, right? So going into the first week of April, like I said, Venus will be in Gemini. So there's a lot of flighty energy hanging around. So you're going to be meeting all kind of people and being extra flirtatious and feeling really funny and flirty and wild with your choices and your decisions. But by the 7th or 8th, give or take a day, there's going to be, there can even be some internal conflicts when it comes to your heart. Because your heart is saying, no, this is the one for me. It has to be. Like this person really brightens up my day. I can't be without them. Right? And then the other side of you was like, well, I don't know. This person is kind of fine, you know? And then by the second week of April, it's been like, nope. Yep, that one over there is definitely still the one. <laughs> They're still the one. I still want you. I still love you. I still can't be without you. It's going to be that type of energy. So this is going to be amazing, Sag, and I'm super excited to see, you know, what you guys' thoughts on this video is, and I'm super excited to see what the universe has for you, especially in the month of May. From what I know, Sagittarius is going to, I mean, not Sagittarius only, but Fire Signs is going to have an amazing 2020. You know, this is just the beginning of it all. This is just the beginning. So, you know, normally you guys always do pretty well after April anyway. So, let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, God. I would love to have you guys as one of my subscribers. That button right there, like right there on that side. Yeah. Can you hit that button, please? And let me know what you think of this video. Share this message around the world because everybody deserves to hear this message. And I will see you guys soon. Stay safe and secure and stable. And I wish you guys the best. Bye.